10 foot section. And I've wondered, once someone gets sentenced and they serve their time, haven't they learned their lesson? And, 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 once, and then once they've been set free, I would think in their mind that they would go, oh my goodness, I'll never go back and do that again because I don't want to be there ever. That's what, that's what the intent of it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, it's suppo you're supposed to be reminded that it was bad enough that you should make better decisions this time so that you don't, so that you don't become what they call a repeat offender. Or so that you don't, you don't, you don't do a thing called re re recidivize. You don't, you don't go, but, but the recidivism rate is like 84%. The people that go to prison will come back and then usually within a year or two, 84% of the time, they'll go back. And I thought to myself, why, once they've been set free, why would they ever say? Because that's all some people know. And, and they may have physically been in, they may have physically been in prison. And, and when they're when they're when they are set free, when they have there's, there's not a change in here. And there's not a change in here. That's why they're doomed to go back again. And I believe what he's saying is he's saying, listen, don't lose, don't lose your freedom that you're getting because I'm reminded, then I thought to myself, as you look at the Old Testament story of the Exodus where, 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 where Moses leads the people out of bondage, And is taking them, taking millions of people to their promised land that God promised them. And on their journey of their promised land, their promised future, the land that was supposed to flow what? With milk and honey? And, and they were to have all these blessings and all these provisions and all these things. And after 400 years of slavery, God was finally going to, re, God was finally going to let them go and let them be free. And then while they're on their journey, they're murmuring and they're complaining to Moses. And, and, and because they like the food back in bondage, they like, the, they like the prison food better than they like the free food. Physically, they were free. Physically, they were out from underneath the hand of Pharaoh. But mentally and emotionally, they were still in Egypt. Mentally, see, the problem was that they were, they were no longer in bondage physically, but they were still in bondage mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And we can look free, and we can sound free, and we can act free, but is our heart... Stand fast, therefore. Be, be, he's saying, be careful. Be careful. Because I've talked to guys who've been in prison, and they said... I don't know how to react. I don't know how to act out here. They do everything for me. And they, they tell me when to get up. They tell me when to go to bed. They tell me when to eat. They tell me when to shower. They tell me when I can go outside. They tell me when I have to come back inside. And there's a whole system of rules. And I'm used to living by those rules. And I have learned that some people can't handle free. Some people don't know how to handle freedom. It's like when an ad gets out of rehab. What am I going to do with this extra time and this extra cash I have in my pocket? Because before, when I had extra time and extra cash, I got in trouble. But now I have extra time and extra cash and nobody's, nobody's staring at me. Nobody's, nobody's making me do stuff. But now I'm going to have to well, I'm going to say this. I'm going to have to grow up and make some, some adult decisions and the guard's no longer telling me when to get up and when to go to bed. But I need to tell myself, I need to go to bed at a decent time if I'm going to get a job. And It's no different for the Christian believer. Nobody's coming to our homes telling us 
Now, Barbara, did you read your Bible this morning? Nobody's telling us, now, Barbara, did you spend some time, some alone time with just the Father? Now, Barbara, did you pay your tithes? Now, now Barbara, did you come to church on Sunday? Those are disciplines that she should do, that she needs to do. That's, that's, that's part of the process of getting free and staying free. But nobody's at her home. And so it's, so it's up to ourselves to, to, in a sense, police our... Come on. To police ourselves. Because Paul the writer knew that there's a potential for us to turn back. And we cannot turn back. If that party was so good, then why did we leave? And why did God deliver us from that? Why would, why would we ever want to go back? It comes down to a heart issue. It's because you can come to church. You can come to church every day till the cows come home. And Paul, I'm not even sure when the cows come home, but they don't. They're stubborn. They don't come home. They just do whatever they want to do. It's, 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 you could come to church. You could come to church all the time, but unless you've done the heart work, and unless you're doing the, the mental work, I'm going to keep my mind, I'm going to keep my heart right in Jesus' name, and I'm going to do the, Here's this word that we don't like today. The disciplines. I'm going to do the disciplines to, keep, to get me free and to keep me free. To get me whole and then to stay whole. And then I'll do whatever it takes. Listen to me. And then I'll do whatever it takes to stay free. I'll do whatever it takes to get free and then I'll do whatever it takes to stay free because I'm not going back again because it wasn't good and it was hurtful. I stayed longer than I wanted to stay. I spent much more money than I wanted to spend and I did things I should never have done. And so I'll do whatever it takes to stay on this side of grace and on this side of mercy and I'm not going back again in Jesus' name. And Paul the writer knew that if you're not careful, you will go back. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. What he's saying there is because, because back then it, it was a big deal to them if they circumcised them or not. He said, listen, if, if you just cut off an extra piece of skin, it's not going to, that's just a symbol. But, but what we need to, he said, it profits you nothing. Whether you're circumcised or not, it's going to profit you nothing. But what we need to circumcise is the excesses off our heart and the excesses off of our lives and cut away the... See, that's what circumcision is. It's just cutting off the excess, the unnecessary parts of our lives in the most intimate of places. But circumcision is a symbol that if we will cut, if we will cut and we will excise the parts of our lives in our most intimate places, nobody can see in here and nobody can see in here. But if I will cut off the excesses, see, that's our, oh my God, that's our problems today is we have too many excesses. Scripture tells me I need to be lean and mean and trimmed. And instead we're fat and happy and lazy. And he's saying cut off the excess. And we're saying it's, it's July, I don't have to go to church. It's raining, I don't have to go to church. It's, well, we're not really having church anyway because we're doing video worship and we're not doing... You know, we don't have a worship leader right now. And I can watch it on video later. Oh my God. Well, I'll miss it. Um, I remember the times 
I remember the times when the church doors were open, we were here. And that's what kept us. I was here Sunday morning. And, oh, Tiffany, we were spiritual. We had Sunday night church. Wednesday night church. Then we had men of integrity every week where the men got together and did a Bible study every night in the classroom. Once a week on Tuesdays. The women had their... We, we were always, we had the attitude that if you build it, they will come, and they did, because people knew the value of getting together when coming together, and, 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 the, and, and, and there was something about getting together with God's family at church, and breaking bread together, and ministering to each other, and, and spending that time together, and our lives revolved around the church house. Now our lives revolve around our phones. We have too many excesses. And if you have too many excesses, he says, Christ profits you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he's a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ who you attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For though we are, for though, for we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Leaven is yeast. And he's saying that in yeast, every time it's found in Scripture, is, 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 is considered sin. And he's saying that a little bit of sin, a little bit of yeast will make the whole loaf rise. A little bit of sin in your life will corrupt the entire body. I have confidence you in the Lord that you'll have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear this judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called... Here it is, here it is, here it is. You have been called to liberty. That's freedom. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So I am free now. And when I first got saved, I had to be in the building. Man, when I got saved, I needed, first thing I needed to do, there was, a, there was an old, old, oh my gosh, old, old, old bookstore. We didn't have a Christian bookstore back then here in town. There was an old Christian bookstore. Greta will remember this because because we we would like we'd go there like every week. It was called Free Chapel, Free Chapel Bible Bookstore in Phoenix. And and we'd go there and and man, I remember when I first got saved, I went and I got I I had to get me a good a good Bible. I didn't want one of those ones with the red outside. You know what I'm saying? I wanted I wanted an expensive one with the gold on the outside of the you know because I wanted to look spiritual. You know, come on somebody. I needed a I needed a Bible cover because I didn't want to get I didn't want to get my my Bible messed up you know and, and and get get it all goofy and 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 I had to have certain certain uh, bookmarks you know Christian bookmarks because you know I wanted Christian bookmarks and and I remember when I when I got saved when I got really saved I I had remember CDs remember CDs anybody remember CDs those those round shiny things. Looks kind of like a record, you know what I mean? Um, I remember, I remember, I had a bunch of a bunch of uh, music, and and I decided to, to 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 trash them all, and I I took them out to the dumpster, and I had to do it at the church. I took them to the dumpster, and I I dumped all my all my secular music away, and 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 I had posters in my room, and I took all the I took all the posters out of my room that weren't godly posters, and 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 I replaced them with Jesus and scriptures and all kinds of stuff, you know, and and and. 
I even had to have a fish on my on my truck. I even got a little fish to put on my truck so people driving behind me would know that, that I'm a Christian. I was all decked out. I had to wear Christian t I went through a phase and I wore Christ nothing but Christian t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? I did everything I could to get right. And then I learned quickly the disciplines that once I got saved and I, and I, and I, I have my Savior, now I need to get baptized. And so quickly, right after I accepted the Lord, I, I said, I need to get, my, my next step is I need to get baptized. Because I read it in the Bible where I need to be, so I needed to be baptized. And and then, and, then, and then I started coming here to a Pentecostal church, and then, well, I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, so I, then I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then I said, well, I'm going to have to get a suit. Because back then, all Christians wore suits. You know, if you're going to be a serious Christian, you know, you're going to have to wear a suit. So here I am, my Jesus fish, and my Bible cover, my brand new Bible with my bookmarks and and my suit from Savers because I was broke going to college. And then I'd watch I'd watch these people come in. Nothing's changed, it's gotten worse. So flippant about the things of God. come when it's Christmas, they come when it's Easter. You can't even give them a Bible because they don't... They You give them a brand new Bible and they leave it on the counter while they're getting bread because the Word of God means nothing to them. Baptism, who wants to get baptized? It's a, it's a private thing to me. It's, I, I want to be baptized by myself. Can we get baptized? No. 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 Some, somebody recently asked me, can, Pastor, can we have a private baptism? I don't want to be up in front of everybody but getting baptized. And what, I don't want nobody to see me. And, and this is a private thing between me and the Lord. I said, no. I said, it wasn't meant to be private. And then I read the scripture in the gospel that says that if you'll deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. That's what the Bible says. And, and so, so I, said, I said, let me understand. Are you just self-conscious about your body? Because I understand that when you get in the water, you know, your, your clothes stick to you and you don't want people seeing your body. Is that it? I said, we have baptismal robes. We'll give you a baptismal robe and it'll be... And, and we could just dump. No, it's just private. To I said, honey, he can't always be private. And you know what? That's the that's that's one of the problems that we have in our society today is we keep Jesus private. Jesus was never meant to be private. Shh, he's just my secret. He's just my help. He's just. My freedom. He's just my key. He's just my. He's just my. And he was never meant to be. He was never be meant to held a secret. And so we look at this, and we, and and then so we take the liberty that we have, and instead of being proud of our heritage, instead of being proud of where we are, instead of instead of instead of being proud of carrying our Bibles, we. We've just gotten so, now we have so much liberty and we have so much freedom that, that we've taken it now to be lazy. I don't have to go to church because they're recording it. I'll just watch it on TV at home. What? That's not why we bought those cameras. That's not why we have YouTube. It's to reach the people that, that will never be able to darken the doors of our church. Not so you can have an option to be lazy. 
Our YouTube channel and Facebook page is not so is not to give you an opportunity to be lazy. It's to reach people who will never be able to come to our church. But we've taken the liberty, we've taken our freedom, and we've abused and we've abused it. Jesus will love me just the same whether I watch it at home in bed or I come to church. It's true. But there's something that you miss when you get together, when you get in the house, and there's something about the discipline of putting your shoes on, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, and getting in the building. There's a discipline that we need in our There's a discipline. Yeah, I can have my Bible read to me on my phone, but I need to dig into it from us. Yes, I could have pastors send me a daily devotional, or I could just do it my... There comes a time when I no longer have to be spoon-fed, but I can hold the carrot myself. There was a time in my life I needed to eat pureed carrots. How silly would it look today, Michael, you and I go to lunch. We go to CGBQ, or whatever it's called. You're having the sampler plate with ribs and 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 brisket and and a so and a and a spicy link and green chili cornbread and collard greens and mashed potatoes. Oh sorry, mac and cheese and sweet tea. The pastor, your pastor and the first lady of the church pull up to the place and we sit down and I say, Yes ma'am, I would like a Dr. Pepper. And I would like some pureed carrots, please, in a Gerber jar with a baby plastic spoon. She brings out your platter. You put the napkin on your chest so you don't ruin your nice shirt. Pastor and Greta and I, we... And every now and then Greta goes over. You know how kids are. Kids are nasty. They'll get it everywhere. How do you get how do you get pureed carrots in your armpits? You're enjoying your hot link, your green chili cornbread. Mm, got grease on the corners of your mouth. Greta says. Are you ready? Me, here it comes, Pastor. Here it comes. More. Here comes again. Oh, this one's the choo choo. Choo chugga chug. You've all done this before. Chugga 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 what we'll be like we need I'm saying this lovingly we need to grow up we need to grow up because there's people around us not only for our liberty but there's people around us who are dying and going to hell. Is 
was too hard, Darlene. We need to do whatever it takes to find freedom. Make sure, make sure that we stay free and then make sure that we could give an opportunity for others to get free too. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you, de- if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. What he's saying is you need to keep your mouth off each other. And he's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. If you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. So I need to stop biting people. And you know what? Babies bite people. My my children, Marie, my children don't bite me now. My 15 and 14, you know how weird would that be? He just walks up to me and bites me. I'd slap the snot out of him. No, now he puts me in a chokehold or a... But, but you, but you, in other words, in other words, we have to grow up and we have to grow up enough because we're trying to, we're trying to grow, we're trying to grow ourselves, but we're also trying to grow our church so that more people could come to know Jesus. But if we are just like the world, then, then what may, and if we're just as bad as the world, then why would we ever, why would I ever want to go to your church if you're if you're broke, busted, and disgusted and always full of drama and always putting it out there on social media, and then you say, you ought to come to my church, I'd be like. Have you been have you have you taught have you been taught nothing? Or have you learned nothing? Or have you applied nothing? See, that's the question I ask. Is how, because because we're we, because we've because we've been trained. I'm not meaning to brag, but we've been trained well. I gotta, I gotta put my my big point, my big boy pants on, and I, I gotta do the right thing, and and I gotta say the right things. I I I have to I have to live. How 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 I, I I I'm supposed to live. I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna listen to the word, but I'm gonna be a doer of the word. I'm not just gonna listen because okay, listening is good, but there has to come a place where you apply it. You know, if you're on a job and they tell you, okay, I need you to take out the trash, and then you say, okay. The boss comes by a few minutes later and sees that the trash can still fill, and he says, I, didn't I tell you to take out the trash? Yeah. Come on, take the, take the, he comes back a few minutes later, probably pretty upset and says, this is the third time now I told you to take out the trash. You need to take the trash out. Yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, I heard you. Right, doesn't that sound like some of our kids? I told you to. Well, then take the, I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. In other words, your flesh is going to want to do something and the spirit of God that lives on the inside of you is going to tell you to do something different. But if you're led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, Idolatry, that sounds like a big, a big scary word. It's, it's, idolatry is you putting anything above the Lord. Hello? Sorcery? <laughs> Pastor, what sorcery? Horoscopes? <laughs> Dream catchers? <laughs> What's your sign? No, I'm a Christian. My sign's the cross. <laughs> Hatred. 
contentions, in other words, fighting, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions or divisions, heresy, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries and the like, which I say and tell you beforehand, just as I had told you in times past, that those who practice such things that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, those type of people will go to hell. That's what it says. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is, here it is, love. How's my love, how's my love gauge? You see, the fruit of the Spirit that Paul talks about here, it's really... It's really gauges. I like, to look, I like to look at it as a dashboard, but not with dummy lights. You know, most of our cars today have dummy lights, where if you're low on oil, then the light will come on. Well, I like the old cars back in the old days that actually had an oil gauge or had a temperature gauge and not a light that came on when it got hot, but, but there was, there's gauges there, and I like that because you, can, because you can look to see if you're starting to get hot not a computer telling you, whoops, it's almost too late, buddy. <laughs> How's my love gauge? Am I getting low? How's my how joy, peace, long-suffering or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Here it is, self-control. Against such there is no law. So how's my gauge on love? How's my how's my joy? How's my joy gauge? Am, am I am I full of joy? Am, am I full of peace? You have to understand that peace isn't the absence of conflict. It's the ability to cope with it, to cope with conflict. I can I can have conflict in my life and still have peace. Come on. And 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 the world didn't give me peace. And the, and, the, and the world can't take my peace away because they never gave because the world never gave me my peace. You know, so just because I have conflict in my life, it doesn't mean that I can't have peace. Because my source is higher than the thing that's trying to destroy me. Come on, somebody. I can, I can be gentle. I can be faithful. Oh, faithful. I can be good. I can be kind. And so I can look at my gauges and I can see, oh, my love gauge is getting a little out of whack. I need to bring it back in. In verse 24, uh, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So in other words, I'm going to do what's right before God and I'm not going to listen to my flesh because my flesh will lead me wrong and my flesh will lead me away from the fruit of the Spirit. Because my flesh doesn't want to always love and my flesh doesn't always want to be kind and my flesh doesn't always want to be gentle and my flesh doesn't always want to be patient. But I am Christ, and I need to hold my mm, Jesus. I need to hold myself to another standard. That just because I think it, just because I feel it, doesn't mean I have to act on it. But I can deal with those feelings in Jesus' name, and I can walk away from those feelings and not have to, not have to give in to those fleshly feelings and those fleshly desires. I will dis here. Ah, oh, here it is again. I will discipline myself. To do the right thing, even when nobody's looking. Right? It's 3 o'clock in the morning, and you can't see cars from around, and there's a stop sign there. Do you stop? Because the law says stop. Or do you just blow through it because you know ain't nobody looking?
I'll never forget the time my wife are traveling back home to visit. And I'm sound asleep and I've got my, I've got my, I'm in the passenger seat. Probably should have told you that first. I'm, I'm tilted back in our truck and a bump or something woke me up and and so I'm still still reclined, and I've opened up my eyes, and I'm just just in the seconds of opening my eyes, and just as I started to to raise up, I see a a big red something go, woof! I'm talking woof! And I raise my seat up, and I look back, and then I realize where I was at, and I said, "Babe, was that a stop sign?" She said, "I don't know." I look in the rearview mirror on the side, and I look in the back. I said, yeah, that's. She did this, 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 look at him. Woo! I said, wasn't that a stop sign? She said, I don't know. It was like, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and she was dead dog tired. I was dead dog tired. And, 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 and she said, I don't know. She said, I didn't see it. Do you want me to drive? She's like, I think so. As we're getting out, and she turn, and she and she gets, she goes over into the passenger side, and we, you know, we cross paths at the front of the truck. She goes, "I think there was a couple of other stop signs too. I might have missed." <laughs> she goes, "I just don't even remember." She goes, "But we made good time." I drove the rest of the way home. <laughs> she didn't do it on purpose. She did it because she was probably asleep like me. But listen, if we live in the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. And that doesn't just mean, and that doesn't mean, by the way, to you Pentecostal folks, that doesn't mean speaking in tongues. Because you can speak in tongues and be nasty. That just means listening to the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. That is living in the Spirit. That's walking in the Spirit. Is, is listening to the Holy Spirit. And when you listen to the Holy Spirit and He whispers and tells you, to do this or not to do that, you listen and you obey. That's walking in the Spirit. It's not, should have bought a Honda. It's not that. It's not that. Oh, and if we relegate the Holy Spirit to just speaking in tongues, oh, we have cheapened the office and the person of the Holy Spirit. No, there's... The God that is living in me is going to help me to overcome my flesh. And it's not always going to be easy. But it will be worth it. Verse 26. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Then I got one last verse. By the way, just because the writer, just because the, the publisher of the textbook, your Bible, goes chapter 5, verse 1 through 26, it doesn't mean that the statement is ending at the end of the chapter. He continues his discussion in chapter 6, verse 1. And he says, Brethren... If a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks of himself to be something when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, then he'll be rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. So we have a responsibility, those of us who are spiritual, when we see someone, when we see someone erring, to go to them as a loving brother and sister and to help try to restore them. Not I didn't say talk about them. I didn't say kick them while they're down. I didn't say I didn't say put it as a prayer request. 
to go to them and try to lift them and try to pick them up and try to help them. That is our job as Christians. Remember he said not to divide and devour each other. That our job is to go to each other and to help each other through these things. If you see me in error, you need to come to me. And if I see you, we need to come to each other so we can lift each other up and help each other. Come on. Like, like true brothers and sisters should, right? Father, in Jesus' name today, I ask that you help us. Oh God, to live out Galatians chapter 5, 6. That we could walk in the Spirit and not be guided by our flesh. That we could be disciplined and do the things necessary, God, to build our faith and to build up one another. I ask, oh God, in Jesus' name, that you will help us today to lead us as only you can, to help us to grow and God to grow up. I love you. And I bless you in Jesus' holy name. With your heads bowed today, maybe you're watching. Maybe you're here. And you would say, Pastor, I need to invite Jesus to come into my life and my heart. And if that's you, I'd like to pray for you. Would you just slip up your hand right where you are? I want to pray for you this morning. Is there anybody? This is what I want you to do. Would you just repeat this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart and save me. Forgive me of my sins and wash me clean and help me to follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. Amen.